Our lives are lived online, and the quality and safety of that digital life has become critical to our happiness and financial success. Today, we need the internet to be fast, safe, affordable, and most of all, for our data to be private. But this can often depend on where you live, and here's why. It spans the globe like a super highway. It is called internet. Millions of Americans own a personal computer. If you're one of them, you can now glimpse the future with nothing more than a modem, a phone line, and a few dollars a month. Here at Surfshark, we do an annual study of digital quality of life around the world, or DQL for short. This tool compiles data from 110 countries, allowing us to compare and analyze digital well-being worldwide. The DQL index is based on five core pillars, internet affordability, internet quality, e-infrastructure, e-security, and e-government. These pillars are weighted and combined to give us a measure of the overall digital quality of life in a country. So let's get into the research. We begin with internet affordability. This pillar measures how much time an average person has to work to be able to afford the internet in different countries. After analyzing 90% of the world's population, here are a few trends that we noticed. Generally, broadband is less affordable than mobile internet. The cheapest broadband internet costs an average of six hours of work per month. In comparison, the cheapest mobile internet costs around 10 minutes of work per month. On the broadband side of things, Nigeria is the least affordable. You would have to work six times more than the global average to afford it. If you happen to live in Mali, which has the least affordable mobile internet in the world, you would have to work 13 times longer than the global average just to be able to join the rest of the world online. On the other end of the ranking, Denmark, Israel, and Sri Lanka are the most affordable. Moving on to internet quality. This DQL pillar is based on how fast and stable internet connections are and their improvement over time. Internet quality is crucial. It impacts almost every facet of our daily lives, including work, communication, and the ability to access what we need online. For instance, Bangladesh's mobile internet speed is only 8% of the speed of the United Arab Emirates. That's like you trying to win a Formula One race in a Prius. And there's an even bigger gap in broadband speeds. The world's slowest internet performs at only 2% compared to the fastest one. Imagine how incredibly long it would take to download anything in Algeria compared to Singapore. So if you want the best internet quality, head to South Korea, United Arab Emirates, or China. Next, the e-infrastructure pillar in the DQL index shows us how developed and widely spread a country's internet infrastructure is. Imagine it like this. If your city has a great transit system, you can easily get from your home to school, then visit your colleague and get groceries on your way back. It's the same with internet infrastructure. If it's well-developed, you have easy access to e-learning, e-commerce, online entertainment, and much more. This pillar has two key indicators. The first one is how many people use or have access to the internet per 100 inhabitants. Around the world, there's a huge gap between how many people in a country use the internet. For instance, in the 12 countries at the top of our DQL ranking, more than 95% of people use the internet, but only one third of people use the internet in the 12 lowest ranked countries. And this can have a massive impact on a country's economic prospects. The second indicator is the Network Readiness Index, which reveals a lot about how prepared a country's infrastructure is for extreme situations. And the COVID-19 pandemic is a perfect example of this. Countries with higher network readiness were quicker to adapt and move important operations online, including things like education, e-commerce, and healthcare. Currently, the top spots for best electronic infrastructure belong to Denmark, Sweden, and Norway. Next, the e-security pillar measures how safe and protected people are online. The main indicators here are the Global National Cybersecurity Index and data protection laws around the world. The National Cybersecurity Index measures how prepared countries are to manage cyber incidents. It analyzes how people's personal data is protected, how countries respond to and defend against cyber incidents, and how accessible cybersecurity education is in a country. And this is a great thing to ask yourself. How private is your data? How safe do you feel online? And is your country prepared to protect you? And then we have data protection laws. Regulations like GDPR in Europe and CCPA in California protect people's privacy and the usage of their data, and they can have a massive effect on digital safety and freedom. GDPR, or General Data Protection Regulation, is a legal framework that sets guidelines for the collection and processing of personal information. So your data is protected by law. 
This is one of the main reasons why Europe ranks at the top of this pillar for the second year in a row. In fact, the top 13 countries in terms of e-security are all from the European Union, with the top three being Greece, the Czech Republic, and Estonia. The last pillar is e-government. This pillar determines how advanced and digitized a country's government services are. Better e-government brings more transparency to the public sector, often meaning less bureaucracy and corruption. It also makes providing access to public services much easier and more efficient. The e-government pillar consists of two indicators, the Online Service Index and the AI Readiness Index. Let's kick this off with the Online Service Index. This determines the user friendliness of your country's electronic government services. Does filing taxes feel like university calculus? Do you need to go and wait in line for hours to get a doctor's appointment? If you can easily do all this stuff online, your country's doing pretty well when it comes to e-government infrastructure. The other key indicator, the Artificial Intelligence or AI Readiness Index, indicates a country's potential for using AI technology to make your life easier. And no, not in a Skynet kind of way. Readiness to adopt AI tech and cybersecurity go hand in hand. 18 of the top 20 countries with the highest AI readiness are also the most prepared to counter cyber threats. The two exceptions here are China and the United Arab Emirates. Meanwhile, the US, South Korea, and the UK rank as the top three countries with the best e-government. What this year's DQL Index found is that e-government and e-infrastructure are actually the two most important pillars when it comes to determining someone's digital quality of life. Quality and affordability are important, but people need to be able to access the internet and they need to be able to get important things done online. One interesting but concerning trend is that broadband internet globally is less affordable than it was a year ago. Compared to last year, people have to work 11% more to afford broadband internet in 2021. However, people have to work 29% less to afford mobile internet this year, often making mobile internet more cost effective. So, what countries are at the top of this year's DQL ranking? Where can people live their best digital lives? Taking the top spot for the second year in a row is Denmark, with South Korea, Finland, Israel, and the US rounding out the top five. There are tons more interesting things to discover in this year's DQL Index, so head over to surfshark.com slash DQL2021 and check out how your country's doing when it comes to your digital quality of life. Thanks for watching. If you're interested and want to learn more about Surfshark, click on another video to keep watching.